Hi, I'm Michael and this is Review Wars. Today we're going to have our nominations for the best party game. And how this works is, you watch the videos for the nominations, you decide which you like best, and then in the comments below, just put your vote for which you think's best, or upvote someone else's comment that's already there. In about a week's time, we'll collate the votes, whoever has the most will be the best party game of Review Wars. So, let's take a look at the nominations. Hey friends, Chubby Meeple here, uh, back for another exciting episode of Review Wars. This week we're talking about party games. What is the best party game? Well, there's a bunch of them out there. Maybe the best one is something like Million Dollars Butt. Nope, that's wrong. Maybe it's something like Spank the Yeti. No, don't think so. How about Super Fight? Everybody loves Super Fight. Nah, not the best. Maybe it is the brand new Joking Hazard uh, Cyanide and Happiness comic game. Nope, love it, but not the best. Maybe it's the one that I think started it all, Cards Against Humanity. Little overrated for my taste as well. You know, then we've got uh, Exploding Kittens. Raised nine million dollars. Nine million dollars on Kickstarter. Surely that's got to be the best party game. Not even close. Bye. Okay, let's let's get serious. It's code. No, it's not. I'm joking around once again. My pick for the best party game, Cash and Guns. Why Cash and Guns? Well, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, uh, it's three little words. Little foam guns. These are fantastic. How much fun can you have sitting around a table pointing guns at your friends and family, maybe shooting them, maybe not. You got your bullet cards. You got to be careful with your bullets, but you shoot them. You're collecting loot. Everybody's stealing loot. You got variable players. Everybody gets to be their own character uh, on here. Yoko, Nikita, Pedro, everybody's got their own powers that are in there. One player gets to be the godfather. You don't get to be the godfather in Cards Against Humanity or in code names, please. This is the best game. Guns, little foam guns and cash. Cash and guns. Best absolute best party game there is out there. Go get it. Play it now. Vote for Cash and Guns down in the comments. Foam Guns. You can't go wrong with Foam Guns. There's no Foam Guns in code names. There's no Foam Guns in code names. That's all I gotta say. Vote for it. Cash and Guns. Number one party game of all time. It's the greatest. I'm the Chubby Meeple. Catch you next time. What makes a great party game? Well, flexible player numbers. You need it to play small groups, large groups, all those. You also need a wide range of players. You need an easy, accessible, easy to learn, easy to teach game that anyone can play. You also need a game that is huge amounts of fun and absolutely hilarious. And that is code names. It meets every single one of those requirements. You have one person giving out clues and then you've got everyone else trying to do word association to guess and then someone gets the assassin and the game's over or you get the wrong team, you get the right team and you kind of just playing off and going oh I didn't see that, oh how did I miss that word, I, oh how did I miss that association and that is what makes this fun and the fact that it is so simple it is just word association, it's someone looks at this they give a clue, that is the game that is how simple it is. It means anyone can play this. It's great fun. It's absolutely fantastic. Codenames is the best party game. This is Ryan Gutowski with One Board Family, and one of our favorite party games is Off Your Rocker by Stratus Games. So Stratus Games, back in 2012, put this crazy little game on Kickstarter and it got funded. This was the age before every game went to Kickstarter. And so the premise of this game is that your group of people that are playing this game, one of them is the psychiatrist each turn. So the psychiatrist walks out of the room and you draw from this deck of cards right here, and you draw this card. This one says, players think they are drivers who just got into an accident with the psychiatrist. Or another option is, players are obsessed with cats. So as a team, this group of people decide which one of these are, they're going to play. And so as a team, maybe they decide that they're going to be drivers who just got into an accident with the psychiatrist. They decide this, they put the card face down, and the psychiatrist enters the room. Now it's the psychiatrist's turn to ask questions to find out what's wrong with these crazy people. So let's say I was one of the players who was sitting in the circle. The psychiatrist might ask me, um, what'd you do today? How was your day? 
and I might respond with, uh, you know, I've, I've just been shaken uh, since since this ordeal, this whole ordeal has just got me shook up. I've got to take my car um, to to the auto body shop. I've got to get fixed. I mean, uh, I can give you my information if you want. That might get the psychiatrist thinking, what in the world is this guy talking about? But what I'm doing is I'm giving him clues about what is wrong with me as one of the clients. And other clients get asked questions. The psychiatrist has to ask everyone a question. And then the psychiatrist has to decide what the ailment is or what their problem is as a group. If the psychiatrist doesn't guess it right away, this timer gets flipped and they have uh, the sand timer to tell how long, basically almost like a rapid fire question session. They, the psychiatrist asks questions as fast as he can to find out what's going on with these people. It's so cool because you get to see people's personalities come out. You get to see uh, just the fun ways that people think about these different topics. And what's great about it is the people's acting actually gets voted on. So the psychiatrist wins one of these point tokens if he gets it correct. And then the group votes on who the best actor was or who the, the person who gave them best information or did the best job conveying, conveying it without going overboard. And so people vote with these points and another player gets a token. At the end of the game, whoever has the most point tokens wins the game. This one is hilarious to play in a group of people and plays up to 12 people. So it's definitely one you want to check out. It's Off Your Rocker from Stratus Games. Hello, it's me, makingthisupasigo.com. And today on Review Wars, the board deck and dice choice for party game was really difficult. Well, it started off really difficult. I was thinking, uh, code names are too obvious, plus I haven't played code name pictures yet, which most people say is better. Um, I've got Raise Your Goblets, which I really like, which is a relatively new game. I have Secret Hitler, which I really like, but some people might not like the theme, but I do think it's better than Resistance. And then I have my favourite, Wink, which is a little heard of game, which you have to wink at people in. Uh, always a winner, and that's not just something I do on the street, that is an actual game. And then a little box came into my life called Insider. And I have a secret to tell you. I HATE SPYFALL! That's right, I'm one of those people who spyfall didn't work for. Because of the pressure, because of the not having an easy system, having all the places in front of you, um, it just didn't work with me for whatever reason. Now Insider has taken the spyfall mechanic and flipped it on its head. In this tiny box you get a relatively small set of cards with six words on each, and on the back of each uh, card is a number of one to six. You get eight roll cards. These are nice cardboard. Uh, six commons, one insider, and one master. And you get a timer, and that is it in this small box. The master will get everyone to close their eyes. They will flip over the top card, which will reveal a number on the, bot on the back of the top of the deck, which will tell them which word they're using, in this case, residential area. They will close their eyes, they will say, insider, open your eyes, and the insider will look at the number and look at the word, so they will know what the master's word is. The insider will then close their eyes, the master will open their eyes, put the deck back so no one else knows what it is, and then everyone will open their eyes, and everyone will start asking the master questions. The master can only say yes, no, or I don't know. So you'll be asking him questions, is it a fruit, is it an animal, uh, what is it? Now remember, the insider is part of this team, but they know what the answer is. So they're trying to direct the team through their questions to the correct answer. If they don't get the correct answer as a group, everyone loses. So this is a very different mechanic because the insider wants the team to win, but they don't want to be discovered. The insider has to get the team to win without being discovered, and then the insider actually wins. If the insider gets discovered after the team has got the correct answer, then the insider loses and everyone else wins. And even the master gets on this because the master doesn't know who the insider is. So the master can say, well, they were asking very pertinent questions actually 
And we had, we've had loads of situations where the inside had panicked because the group wasn't going to get it because the time was running out and they quickly said it at the end and gave themselves away. And other times when they just stayed quiet because the group was doing well enough. So they just asked kind of rubbishy questions. Um, there was time where the answer was vase and we really didn't ask the right questions. We couldn't get it. And the master noticed that one person had asked twice, is it a plant pot? But no one else noticed. The master knew it was the insider, but no one else did. Insider, for the size of the box, for the gameplay you get in it, for the way it includes people with its kind of semi spy ball mechanic, is my vote for the best party game that there is. And I recommend if you don't have it, and if, even if spy ball doesn't work for you, that you pick this up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time on Board Deck and Dice. The best party game is in a bind. Now, I'm clearly biased. Because this is by Bez, and I am Bez, and I make stuff, and this is my stuff. But it is good, and might make you laugh. Now the way it works, is you draw a card, and you read it out loud, this card touching left ear, and then you do what it says. And that's what all you do every turn, and if you ever stop doing one of your things, you lose. So it might be, um, this card on top of head, and then two hands touching, and then one hand on the knee. And then you still need to draw your card. And it's like, ah, you get twisted and twisted and it becomes really difficult. But it's always possible. Now, if you don't want to be the centre of attention, that's fine. Because everyone will start off with these cards. And they're not that difficult to do. And they're not things that you want to do all day. But, you know, nothing eyebrow raising, certainly. And then it's to combination of the cards, I mean the modular nature that gives it this variety and you know eventually makes it very difficult and it's about that shared experience of laughing not at yourselves but at these crazy positions you've twisted yourselves into. Now it's portable, it's just a deck of cards and you can play it anywhere. Speaking from personal experience, I've played it at pubs, conventions, cafes, restaurants, trains, even in the middle of a queue, holding the cards in the palm of one hand and then saying, okay, draw a card and people draw a card, I draw a card from my own hand and then a person who loses first takes over being the table. It's easy enough you can explain it to a drunk person, but if you're a bit less drunk, Instead of drawing a card to determine what you need to do, play slow and sadistic, where you've got a hand of two cards, and then you choose one, and then you give it to that person to do. And this can end up with a back and forth, because it's always the victim who goes next. So it can become a game of chicken as two people go back and forth, then it's who's going to give up first. And if no one does, then one of them will lose and the other person won't be too far after. Now, it's a game good enough that within its first year, nine companies approached me. I mean, I was in the privileged position of being able to turn down a few companies that I have a massive respect for. I never imagined I'd even be talking to, frankly. But in the end, I've signed up with Jigamic, who gave me a big advance and favourable promises for print run royalty and control which they wrote into a contract. Now it's going to come out very soon as a game called Yogi with brand new artwork and in a big tin box about a big like Sushi Go. But if you want the original with like hipster value portability and original art you can't buy it from me. Contractually I'm not selling this anymore but there's still a few shops where you can get it. Now I want to tell you quickly about the thing that elevates it. This card touching what? Left hand above what? A hand on what? Now these are some of the expansions. The wild cards are what elevates it from being a fun twister clone into a, a party game where you push the social boundaries but no further than you're comfortable with. And this is what I would play Everyone makes up what what is like Mad Libs, but it's a good game. It's um, yeah, I think it's the best party game. We have code names: Inner Bind, Insider, Cash and Guns, and Off Your Rocker. 
but which is the best that's for you to decide so do be sure to vote in the comments below and I do hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing the channel and do also check out our contributors channels and as always thanks for watching and bye for now